Hey, it's Grady at Twin Creek Audio, and today I'm going to do another hybrid mixing video. I'm calling this a one-to-one -one hybrid mix because I'm sending each individual track from the DAW out through an individual channel on the analog console, so I'm not submixing anything in the box and sending out a stereo pair or a stem or anything like that. It's going to be one-to-one. -one. One track in the DAW comes out to one channel on the console. I am doing a minimal amount of processing in the box and then everything else is going to be the console and the analog outboard gear. The track I'm using for this is an unreleased Homespun Centaur song called Won't Follow You. In fact, one of the reasons I'm mixing this for the video is because we are considering releasing this unreleased song on an upcoming Homespun Centaurs compilation album. In the meantime though, you can check out the most recent Homespun Centaurs releases, including the Poolside Centaurs Remixes album and last year's full-length album Threve. I'll put links in the video description to those if you want to check those out. So let's go over to the console and check this mix out. So I have all of the tracks from the project sent to individual channels. So I've got kick drum, snare drum, hi-hat, and then one, two, three toms, stereo overheads, and a drum room mic, then bass guitar, then these are acoustic guitars, which was actually recorded with two separate mics, and I have those panned like probably 60 to 70% left and right here. Then we've got an assortment of electric guitars, the lead vocal and then this fader down here is something I'll show you in a minute. It's a trick that I'm doing to some of these guitar tracks. So before we get started, let me play this mix, what I have so far, and then I'll break down some of the things I'm using in the mix. Okay, first of all, I've got some things panned out in stereo, but I am keeping the drums and a lot of things kind of in the center to keep the power of the mix going. I've got a few things going on in the box. I guess I'll get to those first. So first of all, I'm using Re-EQ, included with Reaper, some EQ on this bass guitar. This bass guitar track has a ton of low end and low mids. And even with the Yuri LA-10 compressor that I have on this channel, some of those frequencies were really jumping out. So I pre-EQ'd that bass guitar in the box, then sent it to the console, and then it goes through the Yuri LA-10 compressor, which is a really good compressor on bass guitar. It really evens and smooths out a bass track in a nice way without affecting the tone too much. And then we've got some touches of EQ on the console. I've got some low end being added, and I'm removing a little more low mids here with the console EQ to get this bass sounding good. I mean, this is an unreleased track, so, you know, it's not perfect, but the sounds overall are really good, particularly the drum sounds. I'm going to talk about the drum tracks a little bit because I think these drums sound really good, and they really sounded good before I did much of anything to them. But I had an Audix D6 on the kick drum, I had a Bayer M201 on the snare drum, the drum kit was my Ludwig 67 Ludwig kit and the snare drum is probably a newer like an olive badge Ludwig Acrolyte with a, a Remo coated head so that snare track was mic'd with a Bayer M201 and it sounds really awesome everything was the console preamps here on the Soundcraft Sapphire I think these preamps sound fantastic especially on drums so I don't use any of my outboard preamps when I'm tracking drums. Everything went through the console preamps. I do have a hi-hat here on this channel, 
and that was a PVPVM 480 mic, which I actually like a lot on hi-hat. I don't always use a hi-hat mic, but in this case I had it and it sounded pretty cool because I get a little bit more crunch out of the hi-hat from that microphone. So I have that here on this channel. Three Tom tracks. These were all Audix mics, a D1 and two i5s. A pair of Audio-Technica Pro 37R small diaphragm condenser microphones for the spaced pair overheads. And then the room mic was the ART AR5 active ribbon microphone. The rest of these guitars were kind of a combination of direct guitars and plugins, maybe some amps. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure how Heath recorded all of these guitar tracks. I mainly engineered the drums and I'm doing this mix of this unreleased song. So, so let's hear the drum tracks now. I'm going to solo these drum tracks up so you can hear what these sound like. The drum tracks sound pretty good. They're really punchy and kind of almost has an late 70s or 80s sound to them. I really like it. The snare is really pushed a lot and it just has a really cool sound. Now you might have noticed there is a touch of reverb and what I did is I actually just sent a little bit of the room mic from an auxiliary send over to the Yamaha Rev 500 and I'm using what preset? I've got the Yamaha Rev 500 on a small room sound. I think it's like 0.9 milliseconds of reverb time so I've sent that just from the room mic. None of the other close mics were sent to that reverb and I have just a tiny, tiny bit of that in here. Most of this is dry. There's just that touch of reverb. The only compression on the drums is on the kick and the snare. And on the kick drum, I have the ART TCS twin compressor. I have that on the preset that's called percussion or perk is how they have it on there. And I just kind of adjusted that to the sound that I wanted. Of course, there's screenshots of all this stuff that I'm showing while I talk, so you can see the settings of this. On the snare drum, I have my favorite snare compressor. Since I don't have a vintage DBX, I use the Symmetrix 501 on the snare track. And I'm really not compressing the snare drum that hard, just a little bit to tighten it up just slightly. The rest of these drum tracks don't have any compression. I do have a little bit of EQ added to the kick drum and the toms, and none of the other drums are EQ'd. Basically just adding some low mids and a little bit of attack to the kick drum, adding a little bit of lows to the kick to give it some sub lows, and then adding some low mids to the toms at slightly different frequencies since the resonant frequency of the smaller toms is different than the larger toms. This fader down here, this is actually coming from a line input. And what I've done is used another auxiliary send to send some of these guitar tracks out to a reamp. In this case, it's the Fatronics reamper. And then the reamper is going into a Vertex steel string pedal, which is really awesome sounding. So I'm adding a touch of kind of that Dumble amp sound to multiple guitar tracks using this method. Then I'm returning that through the instrument input on my PreSonus MP20, and then that comes into the line input on the console so I can blend that Vertex steel string sounding track with the other guitars, however you want to say that. Let's go through and hear those guitars without this other track here. Oh, we don't want the vocal soloed. Let's go here, we'll pull that all out, and hear just these electric guitar tracks without the Vertex steel string clean drive added to them. Oh, by the way, I have that steel string clean drive panned more to the right. So that I'm adding a little bit of that kind of dumble sound, which is kind of a compressed sound with a little bit of extra drive to it, adding that to those guitars and then panning that by itself to the right. So I'm just creating a little bit of a stereo spread with the guitars. I've also got some individual guitar tracks panned, including the acoustics. 
but I'm just keeping the drums bass of course in the center and using that trick and just some basic panning on the guitars to keep things nice and wide sounding so that your power and your energy is in the center and then all the atmospherics and all that good stuff and the guitar sounds can kind of swirl around your head and envelop your senses. Yeah, that sounds really technical. So I compressed the lead vocal track in the box with Recomp. You can do what you're told. You can walk down streets of gold and they won't. And then I followed that in the analog world with the ART TCS twin compressor. I have that set to the OPL vocal preset. So it has the optical compressor coming before the VCA compressor. So we have an in the box compressor, recomp, followed by an optical compressor and a VCA compressor on this lead vocal. This lead vocal track was a little bit inconsistent, kind of like the bass guitar in this. So compressing it in both places really enabled me to fine tune the vocal track and get it to sit in the track and sit out front and sound nice and professional. Also those two stages of compression, one following the other, seems to not create as many artifacts or bring up anything unwanted in the sound. So I like doing it that way. Recomp followed by the ART TCS twin compressor. Let me solo this vocal track for you so you can hear what this sounds like. And then I'll bypass the ART with the button up here so you can just hear the recomp compressor on the vocal. From the moment I break free, I will be waiting here for you beside me. If we don't feel this when we die, then how come we don't feel it while we're alive? You can do what you're told. You can walk down streets of gold and they won't follow you. And they won't follow you. So the signal path on the vocal is coming out of the DAW into the console and then the console insert is going through a louder than liftoff royal blue color module. So I'm kind of driving that transformer. So when he hits those notes really hard, you're getting a little bit of sizzle, which I think sounds really cool in this case. That vocal track already was kind of sizzly. So I'm hitting that transformer and then it's going through the ART TCS twin compressor. I don't have any EQ on the vocal at all. So that's the sound we've got. I'm using a touch of reverb on the lead vocals and some of these guitar tracks, mainly the guitars that are playing some of the melodies in the lead part toward the end. And I'm using the New X Atlantic Delay and Reverb pedal. For this pedal, I don't need a reamp because it has a plus four switch. So I'm just running that off of an auxiliary send on the console and then returning the stereo outputs from the reverb pedal back to a stereo channel on the console. So I'm combining that New X Atlantic delay and reverb with the vocal track and some of these other things. Most of these tracks already sounded pretty good even though it wasn't chosen to be released. Now, even though we didn't choose to release this track, it does sound pretty good. I think the drum set, even though we did not choose to release this song originally, I do think the drum tracks and everything sounds really good. The guitars sound really good. The bass guitar and the vocal needed a little bit of help, but we've taken care of that mostly in the analog domain with the help of a couple of plugins. So let's play this entire mix and see what we get.
So I felt like the drum tracks sounded really, really good to begin with. Just a little bit of compression on the kick and the snare to keep them consistent. And we added a touch of reverb to the room mic with the Yamaha Rev 500. The bass guitar and the lead vocal were the only real challenges in this mix. And we got around that by compressing them both in the box and with outboard gear. The guitar tracks all sounded really good. Just a touch of EQ on one or two of them was all we needed. And by bringing each of these individual tracks out through separate channels on the console to mix them the old fashioned way, I was also able to move around things during the mix, make minute adjustments to the vocals and some of these guitars to get the mix exactly the way that I wanted it. 
I think that turned out pretty well, and it was really interesting doing it with this method, just sending one thing from the DAW to one channel on the console, so you're basically really mixing more in the analog domain than ever, because I'm not combining anything in the box. I think it worked out really well. It was an interesting way to do it, and something that I thought might be interesting for the video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out those links in the video description that I talked about to some of the Homespun Centaurs releases, as well as other links that go to help support this channel. I appreciate everyone out there watching. Thank you so much to all the subscribers here on the channel. I love hearing from all of you guys in the comments. Also make sure to like the video and subscribe to the Twin Creek Audio YouTube channel if you have not done so already. I hope each and every one of you out there, wherever you are, have an excellent and wonderful day, night, evening, weekend, weekday, hour, minute, second, nanosecond. Whatever it is you're having, have a good one. Thanks so much for watching.